Hello. In this lab video, we will go through the final two examples, examples 7 and 8, on page 23, the last page of your lecture notes. Example 7. We are given a PV diagram with all the data given. We are told that at point A, the temperature is 300 Kelvin and it undergoes a process of constant pressure to reach state B, which is at 450 Kelvin. Subsequently, there's another process, process 2. The gas is cool at constant volume, so there's a vertical line, to state C, where the temperature is 300 Kelvin. You are also told that the total heat extracted from the gas during this process is 63 joules. So the heat supplied to the system, since it's extracted, is minus 63 joules. We will make use of this data later. Firstly, part A. Determine the work done by the gas in pushing the piston in this process 1, constant pressure. So for this part is pretty straightforward. Work done by, not on, work done by is P delta V. So you take the pressure from the graph is 1 times 10 about 5. Uh, multiply it with the change in volume. So final minus initial 7.5 minus 5. So get gives you 25 joules. This, uh, we'll make use of this data later. So this is the work done by the gas for process 1 is 25 joules. Part B is the part that is a bit, little bit complicated. So uh, we need to analyze it uh, thoroughly. Part B asks you to talk about Ask you to determine the total heat input, so the heat supplied, in process 1. In process 1, what is the total heat supplied? Um, because uh, not enough information to do using first law of thermodynamics, okay? So we need to also make use of process 2, okay? So that is the trick there, okay? So we, if you include process 2, you will notice that the temperature starts at 300 Kelvin and after going process 1 and 2, the temperature goes back to the same, also 300 Kelvin. In other words, there is no change in temperature. So we know that for the total change in internal energy after process 1 and 2, after the two processes, the total energy change is the total internal energy change is zero. Also note that for process two, because it's constant volume, work done for process two is zero. With this two new information, we can proceed to calculate the heat for process one. And how do we do that? We will make use of the term first law of thermodynamics, which let me repeat again. Change total increase in internal energy is the heat supplied to the system plus the work done on the system. We are going to use this law for the both processes, processes one and two, in order to find out the heat in process 1, the total heat input in process 1. So this is how it goes, change in internal energy, so there are two processes, so there's Q1, Q2, there's W1, work done for process 1, work done on in process 2. And we, subs we subsequently substitute the four relevant values. Q1 we know, Minus 63 is what we got from the original question because the question talks about heat extracted. So the heat going into the system is minus 63. And work done by process 1, we already calculated from part A, 
Work done by the system is 25. So work done on the system is minus 25. Work, work done for process 2 is isochloric constant volume. So it's 0. And we also know that since temperature doesn't change from A to C, the total change in internal energy is 0. So with this, we will can calculate the total heat extract, total heat input for process 1. 63 plus 25, giving you 88 joules. This is for example 7. Last example, example 8, we are given a table and by now you have seen this table before, the three uh, familiar columns. Okay, and then the row wise you have uh, four different processes. Uh, your job is to complete the table by indicating a positive sign or negative sign where a positive sign re represents an increase, a negative sign represents a decrease, and you can label zero if there's no change. So how do we complete given the information uh, of the four processes? So let's look at the first process. Compression of an ideal gas under constant temperature so the clue here, the first clue that we can start off with would be because it's constant temperature, so the change in internal energy would be zero. There's no change in internal energy. Second thing we can deduce is that since it's compression, so this term here indicates work done on. So this is minus P delta V. Delta V is a change in internal energy, a change in volume. So since it's compression, means delta V is negative. So ne minus, there's a minus sign in front. So minus negative, you will have positive. Okay, so now we can use first law. If the change in internal energy is zero and the work done on is a positive sign, then the only possibility for heat supplied must be negative. This cannot be, it can't be zero, neither can it be positive. Because then first law will be, uh, not, it will not be consistent with the first law. Let's look at the second process. We can start out with the fact that it is expansion. So it's the opposite of compression. So this is positive, this must be negative. So, or you can look at here. Because it's expansion, so change in volume must be positive. So negative sign in front gives you negative. Next, this is a bit tricky. We know it's constant P, constant pressure. Uh, and you are told that it's ideal gas. So we need to make use of the ideal gas equation. And if pressure is constant, that means volume is proportional to temperature. So if it's expansion, volume increases, so temperature also increases. We can deduce that. So if temperature increases, then we can we know that the change in internal energy is for ideal gas is proportional to temperature. Internal energy of ideal gas is proportional to temperature. So the change in internal energy must be an increase. Similarly, we can use first law to deduce the entry for the middle column. So if uh, change in the energy is positive, work done on is negative, then there can only be a possibility of a plus. In order for first law to be cons in order to be consistent with the first law. Okay, so for the last two, we are talk not talking about gas anymore. We're talking about water and ethanol. Okay, however, we can still use the same argument to fill up the, to complete the table. So what, when water freezes, it expands. So the volume increases. So this sign here must be negative as well. Okay, 
Secondly, we also know that in order for water to freeze, heat must go into the sorry, heat must be taken out from the system. So the heat supplied must be negative. Because water freezes, so you need to extract heat away from the, the water. So if uh, this both the heat supplied and the work done on is negative, then there can only be one possibility for the change in internal energy. It must be negative as well. When ethanol, lastly, when ethanol change from liquid to uh, gaseous state, vaporization, volume also increase. So negative sign as well. Because uh, delta V is uh, positive expansion. So with the negative sign in front, work done on must be negative. When you want to boil something, the heat must be supplied to the system. So positive for heat supplied. And if you look at first law, the only possibility for change in internal energy must be positive. Okay, so that is all for this topic on thermophysics. Thank you.